Hey everyone, Boater here. This is not really connected to any series that I'm doing. I am merely overtired and it occurred to me that this would be a fun thing to talk about. Um, I am currently DMing. Pugmire is an RPG uh, system and setting based on the D&D 5th edition rules where man has left... Uh, there we go, that's in the light. Man is no longer around and dogs now rule the world um haven't been uplifted by man they're bipedal and such and you know you've got your warriors your wizards and everything like that and this campaign has been going strong for quite a while um i've i've really enjoyed it and uh i think my players have enjoyed it too and one thing that helps with that and with my dming style i don't tend to use battle mats um i i don't really Part of it is an effort thing, but also just uh, I I grew up uh, playing AD and D Second Edition without battle maps and without uh, uh, knowing specifically where everything is. It was all just kind of up here. We got an idea of what things looked like, and it might have looked a little different for everybody, but we all ended up kind of on the same page. So that's what I do when it comes to battle. But that doesn't mean that there's not a place for um, physical props in a campaign. In fact, I find that just a little touch like that can really bring such a spark to a game. In previous campaigns, I've had letters, notes that people have found, and so um, <clears throat> in one of the first things that the party did, they went through a bunch, uh, they went through a dungeon that had a bunch of puzzles and challenges. Uh, so an early thing that I brought out for them was the Towers of Hanoi. If you're familiar at all with this uh, puzzle, uh, then you've played a Bioware game, most likely. <laughs> or I guess the other way around, if you've played a Bioware game, you're familiar with the puzzle. But it is this one where you've got three posts, and you have... I'll, I'll keep this simple for the sake of... Um, just, oh, that was more pieces than I expected. Let me simplify this really quick. Where you have a certain number of discs, or in this case, kind of square things here, on one side, and they need to move to the other side. You can only move one disc at a time, and you cannot put a larger disc on top of a smaller disc. Give me just a moment. And this is a puzzle that is done a fair amount. Like, again, Bioware has done this puzzle a fair amount. Um, but this was something that I brought in. This was something that the characters had to do. Um, and so the way that I did it, I, I said, you know, you can either just, okay, you solve it, whatever. Or you have this physical prop here. And, you know, I had them roll whatever the, the characters would roll for solving it. And then that determined how many pieces were here. Four would have been really easy. Seven would have been really hard. This was four just now. Yes, I've done this kind of thing a lot. But it's a physical prop that I brought in and that they enjoyed uh, solving. Um, certainly those who, uh, you know, enjoy puzzles more certainly uh, enjoyed it. Uh, but that wasn't the only prop that I did. Again, that was a... a, um, a uh, that same dungeon... I might still have these. Um, there was also a maze. And what I did was that I would give them the maze, uh, like a cutout of the maze. I don't think I still have this, unfortunately. No, these must have gone somewhere else. Um, a cutout of the maze, because uh, I had pre-made mazes, and uh, again, I had them roll to see how well they did, and that just depended on the size of the maze that I gave them, whether it was like 5 cell by 5 cell, 10, 15, 20, whatever, and they had to solve it, and I timed them. The time, in the end, had nothing to do with the game, it was just they were being put through all of these challenges and such, but it was still fun to kind of compare and, mm, yes, take these notes. Um, everyone got through just fine, but it was something physically that I walk around the table, and I have the maze face down, it's, are you ready? Set up a timer on my phone, flip the maze, start the timer, and oh, yeah, it's a very interesting result. Mm. It gets them engaged in it. That was the first part of the campaign. That was a, a module that I had made up on my own called the cult, uh, the, 
cult of Rabo Labotor is lab rats that exist in the thing, so I made a base for them and, and something to come out to. Oh, and uh, at the end of the dungeon, they found uh, an artifact that they could then return. The point of the campaign was bringing back a potential artifact back to a noble house. And I got something that looked cool for them to have as an artifact. I'm not going to go through the effort of totally plugging it in, but I took this, plugged it in, it glows red, the fan goes, it's an old CPU fan, it's huge and took up a lot of space, but it was a physical thing for them to look at and interact with as it spoke back to them. So, that was the Cult of Labo Tor. Uh, after that, I sent them on more or less just the stock uh, mission that comes from the game. Um, that, that comes like in the back of the book. It's like, hey, here's a starter um, adventure to get them uh, to get them going. Um, but even then, you know, there's a, a part in there. This box isn't closing right. And sorry, I'm being kind of low effort on the editing. Like I said, I'm overtired. But there was um, something that's saying, oh, well, perhaps they find this diary or they find this note. And okay, they find this note. And I just took what was written in there. Instead of dictating the note to them, I gave them this. It's just on regular printer paper. I tore it up around the edges. And if I wanted, maybe I could have singed the edges a little bit. But it, it feels like kind of worn out paper uh, with really scrawled handwriting. Some of that is because my handwriting is awful. Literally, I, I wrote this up an hour before the session. And uh, eh. minimum effort, maximum results. Um, and gave it to them. And they had a physical thing to hold on to. Um, that they could refer back to if they needed to later on. Um, and sometimes the prop isn't even something... Like that Towers of Hanoi thing, that was actually something that was like person-sized, but it was still something for them to interact with. Just for something fun, recently they went up against a giant spider. I said, it's like this, just the size of a house. Something cute. And the reason I'm making this is because of what happened... Uh, two, three nights ago. Um, and this was... Uh, they. I had the party need to find a village. And the village ended up being disguised in the middle of a swamp by an illusion spell. And the first time through, they didn't really succeed on the, um, on the rolls to see through the illusion. Something seemed wrong, whatever. Uh, those were charisma checks to go against illusion. Um, but one of the guys going through did a really, really good search check. He was looking for, like, a cave that maybe they could uh, explore or something like that. So I said, okay, you find a sword on the ground. Um, it, it, it looks like it was dropped from uh, maybe a bit of a height, but it's just kind of sitting there, stuck in the mud. And we were like, oh, the swamp sword, and oh, the sword of the swamp, kind of this, you know, Excalibur light thing, uh, whatever. He got it, he wrapped it up in a bunch of rags, threw it in his pack. Um, you know, this is, while there was a voice whispering at him, this does not belong to you. Uh, there was a character who was also uh, rendered invisible by an illusion spell who was following him around trying to get him to go. Leave what you have brought. And he just booked it and fell on his face and then ended up getting out and it was good times. But uh, eventually they come back and they find out, yes, there's this village here. And while they're doing everything needed at the village, um, and I'm being slightly circumspect because there's a character that wasn't there uh, and who has not yet been caught up. One of the players hasn't been caught up. I don't think she watches this too much, but she might. If so, Caitlin, you're getting some spoilers, but not the crux of the matter. Anyway, at one point... Um, you know they, uh, you know they're they're talking to this esteemed individual that is there, and someone's like, "Oh well, we're we're so important that uh, um, th oh, the party had previously been accused of killing um, a, a nobleman with uh, the thief's blade. The thief's blade was on stuck in it. Um, this had happened while everyone was asleep, so apparently someone had taken the thief's blade and stabbed him. And someone would said, I would be less likely to believe you 
if it didn't turn out to be so easy to take weapons away from you, he says, holding up the thief character's rags with the sword inside that he had taken earlier. So, haha, brought that back around to him. Um, and, you know, to see the merchant gets this and whatever. And, of course, the thief was focused on the sword, so he goes to the mer- oh, the rogue. Thief is putting it a little on the nose, but he he goes to the merchant to say, you know, say, you know, let me see what you've got. <clears throat> and they're like, oh, you're the one that tried to take our sword. Okay. And they take it, and, you know, they kind of, like, unwrap it, and, well, these are your rags. You can take those back, and... He's like, oh, I'm, I'm actually interested. Like, like, what is it? Because he was able to tell that it was magical, but he didn't know what. He said, what is it that makes that sword so good? And so I had, while we were playing, I had this in my hands. I said, you know, it's about this size. It's like this. It's got the, you know, it's the steel and then slightly blued steel in there. <clears throat> and I just kind of like hammed it up as the merchant. And I said, this weapon is not particularly stronger, not sharper than any other blade that you might find, but somehow it always finds its mark. And maybe that's how it found you. Maybe you were meant to have this blade. Maybe that's how it found you on the forest floor. Maybe it's trying to find you now. That doesn't mean I won't charge you for it. I don't think I said that specifically, but, uh, and, you know, and he's just like, what does it do? Like, he's trying to get me to say that it's a plus two sword or something like that. Um, yeah, and that's what it ended up being. It was a plus two to attack roll, but not to damage. Um, the best they've got previously is like a plus one, plus one, whatever. But it's, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm playing with it. And the merchant is looking it over as they're telling its story. Looking down the edge of the blade at the player. Now, the player, I don't think, is too much in this end of role-playing. He prefers the, the combat side of things. But I listed a rather ludicrous sum for it. The way that Pugmire does money isn't physical, like how much plastic you have, how much currency you have, uh, as far as like a number. It just goes in progression. If you have no coins, a few coins, some coins, many coins, or lots of coins. He had many coins, and I said that the merchant names a price that will bring you down to a few coins. Basically, from step three down to step one, the only thing less is you have no money. And he didn't try to haggle at all. Uh, And part of that is because I think he's the type that doesn't roleplay as much, doesn't think to haggle. And another player did chide him for not haggling at all. But uh, I think at least part of it had to do with the merchant selling him on it. Holding this blade... And realizing that this is a short enough blade that you could perhaps do some sneaky backstabby stuff with it. Oh, rogue, good sir. But, um, just really admiring the craftsmanship of this Nerf Enforce blade. So, yes, there you have it. That is a tip for you if you are running any sort of role-playing game. Props are handy. Um, If you decide to go the battle map route... By all means, go for it. I've played plenty of games that use battle maps. It's just not my DMing style. Um, But something I always try to do, uh, ideally once a session, but usually ends up being every two, maybe three sessions, is having some sort of a prop. This happened to be lying around for that one, but others I will go out of my way. Like I bought that Towers of Hanoi game because, number one, it's a really nice one. Um, number two, it was affordable. And number three, but it was mostly for the session. Um, and it went over really well. And it was just for one session. It was just for like five minutes during it. But it made a memory, a memory for me. And it was early enough that I hope that it was a memory for the other players too. Um, so make your games memorable. Give your players something to interact with something to hold, something to write, um, something to do, that it's not just all up in here, but that they're here. And here. And here. 
Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and let me know what sorts of props you've used before. Um, if you want to hear more about my adventures of running this game of Pugmire, then please let me know. Uh, I'm working on getting the Monarchies of Mao source book. Um, again, it's just kind of getting the scratch together to do it. Scratch, because cats, they're cats. Uh, it's a companion to Pugmire. Um, or even a standalone on its own. It's in the same setting, but it works as a standalone with cat focus rather than dogs. Um, there are lizard people who are uh, listed as potential enemies, and the party has decided to go south to the lizard kingdom, so I need to make up an entire socio-economic area sometime in the next week and a half. Why do I do this to myself? Because it's for the players. It's for them to have fun. And maybe I can cheat them out of just a little more plastic on the way. Anyway, thank you. Like, subscribe, comment. You can follow me at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.com slash Boaterbug. Support at Patreon and Ko-Fi.com slash Boaterbug. Uh, and watch live at Twitch.tv slash Boaterbug. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.